What is up adventurers, we have had an incredible few days here in Palenque, Chiapas, Mexico and we have put together this video to showcase how truly unforgettable this place is and we've packed it full of things for you to see and do when you do come to Palenque. We have three days full of ancient ruins, wild animals and even wilder waterfalls. Palenque is 100% the next place to add to your list of must see places in Mexico. We hope you guys enjoy the adventure through Palenque with us and let's jump right in. Dos, por favor. Sí. Gracias. Gracias. Oh, gracias. The entry to the park here was 90 pesos per person and then you have to pay an additional 80 per person um, towards the, I think it's towards the excavations and everything, like towards the historical office, let's say, of Mexico. Um, so it comes down to 170 per person if you want to enter this amazing area here. As this place is just kind of surreal to be honest. Apparently around 10% only of these ruins and of this entire area here has actually been excavated so far. It only leaves, leaves, leaves your imagination as to how much more of this wild jungle area here is left to be discovered. Right now we're currently in a um, bit of a market area that was set up here obviously because these ruins do attract quite a lot of tourists so check this out. Um, this market area is incredibly cool, lots of it seems to be local Mayan people are here selling their stuff. Over here in this direction, you've got ruins. Over here, ruins as well. Everywhere around you, incredible stuff. And there's a ruin here. <laughs> here in the area of the ruins, um, we saw in other videos that people saw howler monkeys and I think black panthers or something like that. And you definitely like, even we're just at the entrance now. So like maybe five minutes in and um, you do get the direct feeling of being in a jungle. Like check this out, this is, Obviously the ruin. Let's see how crazy big those leaves are getting here. What? This is my hand in comparison. How crazy is that? Like we thought we we saw some jungle beforehand already, but this is like next level. This feels like an actual jungle. All of the trees with the air roots. Kind of feels a little bit like being in a Tarzan movie here. <laughs> really cool though. If you do choose to visit the ruins here, make sure to wear some shoes that you feel comfortable in um, climbing or walking funnily shaped stairs. Um, as you can see here, it's definitely a challenge. All of the stairs have like a different height. <laughs> And um, the stairs at the beginning, they kind of are up to your knee and I'm definitely a tall person. So it is a little bit challenging here and there, but all right. 
<laughs> so guys, unfortunately, due to um, the pandemic, a lot of the ruins have these, um, you're prohibited to actually access the ruins, which really sucks. Um, we heard that before the pandemic actually started, you could access the ruins, like you could actually go inside the ruins and actually, you know, climb up these ruins, which is incredible because you obviously can't do that on Chichen Itza because over the years there has been, you know, the curse of Chichen Itza if you climb it. A lot of people vandalized Chichen Itza, but it would be amazing if you could actually go in and access these ruins because some of these ruins are just out of this world. Check this one out. It stretches all the way up here and then you just have jungle. Over here, this one is actually covered in jungle. Um, and then in behind, you can't see really well because the sun's blasting, but in there you have really thick jungle and it just stretches back. Um, you really do feel like you're in an episode of the Jungle Book or something or like the Jungle Book movie or something while you're walking around here. Um, it's just incredible. Check this one out as well. This one right here in front. So this actual pathway stretches all the way back uh, towards the market that I was just talking about there. And then you come out here to this one, this one, and then this one as well. So you come straight out to three amazing ruins um, and there's tons of stuff to actually explore around here so let's go and check more of these out here behind us seems to be the area where they would play ball games so I think the the game was called Pokta Pok here in Palenque it might be Pelota instead of Pokta Pok but in the Yucatan Peninsula we heard the, the name Pokta Pok quite a bit um, it seems like here is a little bit missing it would be like very large on both sides with the little rings on top and you would have to try to get the ball through the rings on top uh, and I heard as well that someone at the end of the game got sacrificed. We had a little bit of a conversation about that just there. We're not sure if it was the winner or the loser, but I think it was the winner. How cool is this? The trees everywhere here have like huge, and I'm telling you like huge plants growing on them. Like this plant here is easily, I would say like my height. So like five foot nine, five foot 10, but all of them have some sort of other plants on top of them which is absolutely crazy dave and laurie the couple that we came here to the ruins with they actually explained to us that they have these trees growing around here in palenque i'm not too sure if it's specific to palenque but they're hollow they're totally hollow they're huge hollow trees that are actually filled with water so check this one out um right here it goes all the way up nice and high i'm guessing like easily like 20 meters 30 meters maybe high and it's totally hollow <laughs> so that's kind of um a little bit of a cool thing and um, when you do come here make sure to look out for one of them they almost look like redwood trees or the tree uh, bark on them is kind of like a dark burgundy red Walking through this jungle area just makes you feel so tiny. I mean, like you have heard probably about how you feel when you walk through New York. This year, I would say, feels pretty similar. And we also, I think we heard howler monkeys in the distance. I, like I've, Every now and then I'm not sure because, you know, you have those people with the little flutes that imitate the animal sounds. So you're not sure if that was an, act, an actual monkey or if it was someone with a flute. But um, in this case, I'm just going to say it's a monkey so I can say it's a monkey. <laughs> that 
that was a little pit stop there at those ruins and to be honest we spent roughly around an hour walking around the ruins and, and, and an hour is plenty of time to walk around and explore. Um, it is quite a large area but a lot of the area is closed off because of the pandemic. I believe before the pandemic as I was saying you could actually go in and explore all of the insides of the ruins so that kind of cut down a little bit on the exploration but we're going to go now to check out an ecological park um, called Alusius. so hopefully that's something um, interesting we can see some cool animals maybe a few toucans maybe a few pumas who knows so let's go We are in the eco park Alusius now and um, it costs 150 pesos per person to enter this area but all of the animals here, they have cl up close to 400 animals as far as I understood and all of the animals here are rescued. So it is a sanctuary for uh, animals that were, you know, not treated well before, circus animals and, you know, those types of animals that walk around with the people to take pictures and all of these things. And um, so this is more of a sanctuary. You can take pictures with the individual animals as well. We're not going to do that today, very obviously. Um, but that goes then towards their food as well, so you can kind of sponsor the animals by taking a picture with them, but we're not going to do that. So because this is an ecological park, you have a lot of wild animals that are literally wild and they're just let to roam free around the park itself. Not every animal is actually in an enclosure. And we just saw some wild monkeys, an incredible experience. Wow. This part of the park was truly amazing. There was a whole family of wild howler monkeys in the trees just above us. We only realized that they were there because we noticed apples falling into the turtle ponds below. Park just gets better and better. We just entered into the crocodile zone and there's literally a sign saying do not sit on the fence, jump, speak loudly, anything like this. So hopefully we can see some crocs because up until now 
it's been a very eventful day. Oh my God, there's one right here in front. Check this out. Slippery. I just saw the sign here behind us saying danger snakes please don't step off the path and they put that sign literally at the end of this trail I think like we have like maybe another 20 minutes and that's it um, so now we know we are not supposed to step off the trail um, but anyway. We made it to the top of this beautiful little tower here where you can overlook the entire sanctuary and lots and lots more of jungle. Um, right now in the back you hear the howler monkeys. Check this out. For a very long time at the beginning we were actually not sure if those are monkeys or if it's one of the big bigger ish cats like the jaguar or maybe a panther or something but yeah those are monkeys this is absolutely amazing here in on this tower somewhere kind of in the middle level you can be on the same level as the howler monkey so you from where i'm standing right now you can see the entire family wow. To wrap up day one, we made our way down to the aviary, which was the last stop in the Aleutius Ecological Park. We saw some crazy looking spoonbill birds that looked like something from Alice in Wonderland. But we need to save some of our energy. So let's jump right into day number two at the Roberto Barrio waterfalls. Let's go. Numero dos here in Palenque and um, we made our way up to the waterfalls Roberto Barrio and here in the area you have loads of different waterfalls but we decided to go with this one because we read in a few travel blogs and blogs that um, this one here is kind of the lesser known one and less crowded one but one of the most beautiful ones so we decided to come here uh, you can take a colectivo from Palenque center directly for 50 pesos and it takes about an hour to get out here um, on a side note directly, if you want to go back home, the last bus is around 4 p.m. So make sure you get here 
early like 10 a.m is the latest i think you should be here maybe nine would be better um and the entry to this natural reserve here is 30 pesos per person let's go and see if we can find the coolest waterfall there's so many we can basically not decide where to go right now Disculpe, tengo una pregunta. Sí, dime. ¿Es eh, peligroso per, porque el agua es peligroso ahí o es por las personas? No por las personas. No, mira, no es tanto por las personas, sino que lo que pasa hay turistas que llegan a perder. Ah. We walked a little bit too far outside of the tourist zone um, and a guy with a walkie-talkie came looking for us and we had to walk all of the way back and he said it is way too dangerous up there. Um, there's people that don't really want the best thing, let's say, for the tourists and uh, that we shouldn't walk too far away. So now we are back here in the tourist zone and uh, we found our first place, I think, where we are going to take a swim here as well. I don't know if you can hear that in the back. Obviously, it's very loud with the water here. Um, but there are howler monkeys here as well. So you can hear them scream through the forest kind of from that direction, uh, which is super cool. I hope we can see some today as well. Between the waterfalls and the howler monkeys, I really do think that we found paradise just here in the Roberto Barrio waterfall. I hope so much that you can hear that over the water. Oh my God. Looks slippery with the flip flops. At this point, we noticed more tourists and some locals coming into the falls area which meant that we needed to find a good place to settle down, grab some lunch and go for a cold dip in the rushing waters. to load the backpack holding the drone and we're going to be crossing the actual waterfall now so let's see what happens <laughs>
compared to Barrio waterfalls, you get the chance to swim in various pools, explore the beautiful nature all around this area, and let the water of the waterfalls massage your neck. We even found our way into one of the caves, just directly under the waterfall that you can see here. That was something else. Just the B-roll and the footage and everything that we took today speaks for itself. <laughs> I'm gonna build a house. <laughs> As I was saying guys, that was Roberto Barrios. This place is one of a kind and an absolute must visit when you come to Palenque. 30 pesos per person is the entry fee and it costs 50 pesos each to come here in a collectivo and it is by far the most incredible unique experience that I've had um, that we've had um, the waterfalls there's so many different choice of waterfalls I think there's like easily 30 40 waterfalls there's so many places to go for a swim. The water is freezing. You can probably tell by my voice that I'm still in shock. And you can actually go in under the waterfall too and get a nice massage from the water itself. But uh, this day, day two of this Palenque vlog has just been absolutely incredible. The plan right now is we're gonna go and get some food, maybe grab one of these chickens like Rocky and uh, whack it on a barbecue oh yeah day two complete see you when we get some chicken day two is a wrap what an absolutely incredible day this was. We are never going to forget this day and the memories that we've made. We jumped back into the Colectivo and made our way to Palenque Centro. To honor this day, we grabbed a cold beer and told each other some stories of our travels. Welcome to day three guys. Today we're in the center of Palenque and we're going to be showing you uh, and exploring ourselves around Palenque Centro. Going to get some food and just really enjoying the atmosphere of Palenque itself. Right guys, so to kickstart uh, day three, we had breakfast at one of our favorite places called El Caracol de Jade. Uh, really, really tasty food for amazing prices. I'm gonna pop the price up here. We, well, I had two quesadillas uh, with cochinita, so two quesadillas with pork, a little bit of a side salad, black coffee, and then a pineapple juice. Um, what did you have? I had two slices of bread with butter and jam. Uh, I had a fruit salad, a tea, and a pineapple juice as well. Yeah. And it, I think it, it came down to a total of like 109 pesos, so super cheap. Yep, we're gonna pop the price up right here so you guys know exactly what you can expect when you do come. And I'll flash the menu up here at some stage too. 
but uh, now we're just checking out this church here in the center so let's go and do that super unexpected just as we were heading towards this church here right next to the church you've got a bunch of these trees and uh, we noticed or we heard a little bit of commotion and turns out there's some wild monkeys that came into the center of Palenque um, we saw some kids feeding the monkey um, and the monkey is actually still here there's a whole family of monkeys that are here in the trees um, so everybody's stopping and taking pictures and going crazy but yeah check this out the monkey is actually right here in front of me I'm gonna turn this around and show you guys right now How wild is that? I don't know, I don't want to get too close, but um, a very interesting turn of events uh, very early on here in day three in Palenque. So let's go check this church out before we make these monkeys a little bit angry. <laughs> is absolutely beautiful um, for the first time I think since we entered Mexico really we saw a picture as well where Mayan people were depicted together with a Christian priest and we didn't see that anywhere else so we think that's absolutely positive very very great that you have a little bit of um, the Mayan culture there in the Christian church as well we didn't I think we didn't see that in Valladolid or Merida and obviously not in Playa del Carmen um, and they had a very beautiful altar as well for Maria there um, with a little bit of Christmas light so it looked very funky but I thought it was very beautiful. Next up guys we're heading to a local market called Mercado Guadalupe and um, we're on our way there now just walking through the center. On your way to Mercado Guadalupe there's a bunch of things to check out as well such as the main tourist area of Palenque. It's actually called La Cañada. Um, the whole area in the center is called La Canada, La Canada or La Cañada. Um, and in that central area, you'll find all of kind of the mainstream local, uh, relatively local uh, tourist destinations, um, places to drink, places to watch American football. Generally an interesting place, but you will get higher prices. Um, but it is also a great spot to meet people from Europe, from America, from Canada, etc. Yep. Guys, that was a quick little pit stop there at uh, Mercado Guadalupe. Uh, that area around there is very uh, packed full of locals, packed full of things to explore as well. Lots of cool stuff to see and lots of nice fresh fruit and vegetables and meat and stuff like that for you to grab too. So, But 
on to the next objective for day three here in Palenque. We're gonna try some chocolate. Um, as far as I know, this place here, Cafe and Chocolateria is the name. We're gonna have some authentic hot chocolate from this region of Chiapas. Uh, see what it tastes like, give you guys a little bit of a review. And then we might be approaching the end of the video soon. Who knows, but we might do something else, but keep watching until the end because it might get a little bit more interesting. You never know with Chiapas, a monkey might come into the cafe. We got ourselves some uh, chocolate. Already very excited, check it out. <laughs> we, just, we both just got the same. It's basically like a sweet um, hot chocolate, very foamy and frothy. Um, and there seems to be like little chocolate nibs in there as well. So with every mouthful, you're gonna get like a mouthful of chocolate nibs and you get to have a crunch as well. Um, so very excited to dive in and try this. Just waiting for it to cool down a little bit. It actually comes in um, a terracotta mug. We just cheers there and it, uh, I don't know if you can hear this sound. <laughs> it sounds really funny. It sounds like you're cheersing with like wooden cups or something. I'm really scared that we're going to cheers and the entire bottom is just boop yeah. <laughs> to come off and that's it for your hot chocolate. But um, I think they're they're pretty stable. I think if that's the right word. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, we should be safe. Um, so here comes taste and the verdict. Let's see what it tastes like. Oh, it's amazing. You don't you don't think that drinking a hot chocolate when it's like 31 degrees Celsius and humid out You never think of actually doing that, but it actually tastes incredible um, It's really really sweet as well. What about what do you think about it? Oh, yeah You get the like the real bitter taste of the of the proper cocoa, you know, it's not like the the cocoa that you would get in Europe that is like overly industrialized and processed it actually tastes like as if you would chew on a cocoa nib or like a bit of cocoa basically um it's not so sweet as well like we ordered it sweet but I think you do get it bitter here as well so like completely natural without sugar but this one with a little bit of sweet I really like it um <laughs> just feels like you're lying in a like a cocoa pot <laughs> yeah guys if you are a chocolate lover uh, definitely come here and check this out when you're in when you're in Palenque. Uh, Cafe and chocolate chocolateria 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 chocolateria. Uh, <laughs> check this place out, guys. Um, well worth a visit, and it's very um, central. So it's literally slap bang in the central, next to a bunch of hotels, and the ADO bus station as well is actually just over here at the end of the street. Once you get off the ADO and you walk through here, this will actually be one of the first things that you see. Um, just on a side note, you can buy the, the raw cocoa and raw coffee here as well. So you can buy both and then just kind of grind it up yourself or you can buy it grind it ground as well, yeah. and which is absolutely fabulous. Like if you're just traveling for a week or two, definitely come here and get yourself a pack of cocoa or fresh coffee. Absolutely insane. <laughs> Guys, we hope that this video has inspired some of you to come and check out Palenque and Chapas in general as well. We've had an amazing few days here and we can't wait to come back in the future as well. Our next stop is on the list, so stay tuned for that. Um, keep in mind, guys, as well, that Palenque and Chapas in general is one of the poorest parts of Mexico. So they definitely do need the help and they do need some tourism to and more tourism here in this part of Mexico. So definitely make sure to come and check it out. Guys, my name is Luke. My name is Naomi. And we'll see you guys in the next adventure. Thanks for watching, bye.